we have 67 acres here. It's the largest contiguous development opportunity in central London for 150 odd years. Victorian station. And I want something that's robust going in here, but not shouting too loud. This is not easy to build something like this. On top of a kind of pretty ropey 1850s building. It's really a piece of pretty amazing engineering. I mean, the brackets is an issue, but, you know, it's really not big stuff. It's just a bracket, for God's sake. This scheme actually retained two end brackets. It seems to me we're getting slightly sidetracked by the brackets issue, when there's a whole fundamental yeah. interior design here. Yeah. When I look at that, it says to me Barbican. It does, 1960s. Yeah. That relied on the brackets being moved, and uh, it, there's been a clarification that they don't wish the brackets to be oh, moved. They're, they're trying to distract me from the... Real issue by the brackets. It does seem enough a waste of time. It's incredibly frustrating. At King's Cross, the coaches are filling with passengers. Porters are willing to carry their cases and find them their places for a tanner or even a shilling. In three years' time, 55 million rail passengers will stream through this space age canopy every year. It will form the new entrance to London's King's Cross Station and be the first substantial addition to the station since it was designed by William Cubitt in 1851. In the early days, we had looked at all sorts of different options for building a concourse in the, in the train shed, building a concourse again to the south, da, 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 different forms. And I remember I went round with Terry Frost, you know, the great painter, and I said, and I said to him, we're talking about, you know, what, what this new concourse could be. And he said, well, we'll keep it. He said, well, look at this great roof, this great roof. He says, it's like a great rainbow. And he did this beautiful kind of rainbow uh, watercolour of the two, the two vaults. And that really was the inspiration to keep it, to respond to that form. And then, in a way, map that on the side. <laughs> Not only that, but Network Rail is also cleaning up the eastern and western ranges of the station. Renovating the huge barrel-like train shed. Erecting a new passenger bridge. And finally, demolishing the 70s extension that now obscures Cubit's grand facade. You know, this is our city, so, you know, we will use King's Cross. You know, my kids will use King's Cross. And um, when I'm dead and gone, there will be people who still... You know, whatever, it's a big... It's hugely important to get right. But at King's Cross, he faces one major obstacle. English heritage, the official guardian of the nation's history. The entire station has been designated or listed as a Grade I building of major historical significance. So nothing inside or outside can be touched without EH's permission. The listing dates from the dismay that greeted the thoughtless destruction of neighbouring Euston in the 1960s, an act of vandalism that makes King's Cross's current redesign a sensitive issue. The historic environment is actually at the heart of what makes London such a successful city. It, you know, it's probably the biggest reason why people want to, to live here, to work, to visit, to invest in. So it, it warrants care, it warrants looking after. And what 
makes my heart sink is if somebody wants to intervene in that without any understanding of why it's special and why it needs to be cared for. King's Cross is a litmus test for a major policy shift by EH. Accused of being obsessed with history, they're now saying they will balance preserving the best of the past with recognizing the needs of the present. This new accommodating stance has allowed them to say yes to the new station canopy, yes to the remodeling of the Eastern Range. But how far have EH really traveled? Now John McCaslin wants them to say yes to his new booking hall. It transforms a huge space in the Western Range. In the basement, a pump room. Above it, a disused pub, now home to the station's cleaners. But the pub also houses some original 19th century brackets, dear to English heritage. Hero, can we get going, old chap? Western Range and mostly the ticket pole mark. This is the book. The English Heritage have flagged up this, particularly because they're unhappy with elements of its treatment. The main concern is in relation to some of the details and the exposure of some of the original architectural features. Right. That image there is a bit, little bit misleading because we actually, it doesn't represent all the historic features that are being retained. Is that the space, Mark? Is that the space at present? This is the space at present. As you know, the space at the moment is used as a plant. But don't you want to just blow that up? It's just kind of A1 and say, this is what it's like now. I mean, give them very little information. That is what it's like now. That's a reality, that bloody plant room. Indeed. But what we're doing is, is retaining everything that's left, enhancing and repairing it, and revealing it. I think the one element we're not revealing are these bloody brackets. Isn't it also relevant that uh, nobody, I hope, is suggesting that their restoration means that all the uh, ticket collectors have got to have big, you know, walrus moustaches and wear whatever they wore in the 1850s. The point of any negotiation with the English Heritage, Terry Fowler used to say this, he used to say, take along a drawing that looks like you love the old building. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? <coughs> if, dress like if the you, old building. Well, it's not the dress, it's actually dress the project like that. There needs to be evidence on the wall of how dare you how dare you, how dare you how actually make you? a proposition that we're destroying anything and that we're not the guardians of the heritage credentials of this building? It's not their remit to comment on issues of like and dislike. I think you want to be specially dressed, Mark, with a, tw with a, a tweed, no, a tweed tie. <laughs> <laughs> like a, like a sort of Italian hunting outfit, I think. Yeah. Italian summer hunting outfit. One of these yeah. funny hats. The Though the guard may look calm and laconic, his obsession with time is quite chronic. This is a key argument. Without a new booking hall, Network Rail think the station redesign will be unworkable. The station concourse at the moment handles 47 million passengers a year. By the time of the Olympics, it's going to be 55 million passengers. And part of the problem for us is that we have to make sure that we can accommodate that growth. And here at King's Cross, this is the problem. We have here a concourse that was designed and constructed in the 1970s. It is woefully, woefully inadequate. We have a concourse space which, to actually meet the people that are going to be coming through, has to triple in size. The problem that we've got is you've got the Euston Road, St Pancras Road, and then you've got York Road, which is a very tight geographical space. So if we've got to find somewhere that is three times the size of this, where can it go? So the new Western Concourse has to physically move from the south side of the building round to the western side. So all of this gets demolished. And for the first time in a hundred odd years, the facade of the cubit train shed is going to be opened up. 
The eastern range is nearing completion. At EH's insistence, every brick has been cleaned, every window frame refurbished, and every roof tile replaced. This is not easy to build something like this on top of a kind of pretty ropey 1850s building. It shows a lot of, you know, skill. Beautifully made. Look at all this stuff. It's well done. John's here to tot up quite how much heritage he has saved in a plea for leniency over the changes he now wants to make to the booking hall. This is a very interesting sort of Heath Robinson sort of ventilation system from the um, 1890s. This is a, an English heritage uh, absolute requirement. This is English heritage gone mad, I'm afraid. Keep it I mean... You could have a little game with mice running along, but this is not really relevant, I don't think. I don't understand why we would retain this. It doesn't serve any purpose, is it? If it's in the it's way, they're allowing piece. us to take us out. Can't we just say it's in the way? Well, we're doing a survey to see. Yeah, we'll say it's in the way. way. <laughs> Thank you, Polly. Isn't this great? Look at this. Well, then this is all made on site. This is all made on site. So this isn't your B&Q plastic stick-on stuff, is it? I'm looking to see whether they've got... No wonder it's costing so much, project. It's done this with plaster for it. No, but look, it's properly done. It's properly done. Unlike St Pancras, uh, excuse me, this is, <laughs> this is properly done. No, it is. Look at it. It's unbelievable. This is very dangerous. I could begin to love heritage. <laughs> Imagine then that's a different colour. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Yes, yes, you I like old. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't old like and new together. I don't like it as old much as new, new but I like old. <laughs> old is good. Old is good. Old is good. <laughs> On the other side of the station... So this is going to be the sample room. Basically, this is the one we're proposing as the first song. The person that John has so far failed to convince in the Battle of the Bracket... E.H. case officer, Claire Brady. Smaller rooms. This is not the grand rooms. Our aim ultimately is to get something which has a minimal impact as possible upon the character of the space. Where Network Rail, its architects and engineers have huge teams working on the project. On the ground, English Heritage have a team of one. Claire. And would you be OK initially with brick panels being done in metric bricks rather than imperial? Yeah, but you will need to source imperial. Oh, I know. Today. <laughs> Claire's got to enact the new EH policy, stand up to John McCaslin, but she's also handling the vast goods yard to the north, where her task is trickier still. Now a wasteland. Developer Argent want to turn the goods yard into London's newest residential district. A challenge for EH. To do it, Argent argue they need to change completely some historic buildings and demolish others. Take the Carl Ross apartment block, immortalised in the classic 50s crime thriller, The Lady Killers. This is Wilberforce. Yes. I understand you have rooms to let. The place where the heist was planned, the murders committed, and millions stashed. Oh, but that... hey. Argent have applied for permission from English Heritage to knock it down. Most exhilarating. We've got to get some of the 163 million people that will be using that transport interchange by 2012 we've got to say, hey, why don't you stop uh, and make the journey to the north? Because if they don't actually stop and make the journey to the north, uh, none of what we're doing here is going to be able to continue because we will go bust. So the four-storey brick building there with the red stripes sadly has to be demolished. So when people come out of that transport interchange, they can understand that there is something exciting to the north. Roger wants the Carl Ross buildings demolished so he can entice people here. The Granary Building, centrepiece of his site. Once this was London's grain store, as trains from all over the country brought wheat, barley and corn. 
Now he's hoping to fill it with 5,000 students. Central St. Martin's, the famous art and design college, is on the hunt for a new headquarters, and Roger is hoping to tempt them here. Can you imagine standing in here in 2011, and this is going to be the largest square in London since Trafalgar Square, just through that gap there. And you're going to stream in here, you're going to stop and just be awe-inspired looking at the structure. And you're standing in what will be the university gallery and shop space. So, you know, after you've eaten and drunk, you know, get some culture and spend some money. To Argent's intense relief and to equally intense local dismay, the new EH policy of pragmatism does apply to the very building where Paddy is precariously perched. English heritage agree Carl Ross can be knocked down. The building that we're standing on today, it's just not possible to connect all of that area to the north to the main part of London to the south with this in the way. It's just physically not possible and so we have accepted that this building needs to go in order to form a road. Now that's, that's quite unusual because we don't normally wave goodbye to historic buildings to allow somebody to build a road. But that road is absolutely critical to the financial success of everything that happens there. If it, if, and if that doesn't work, um, none of it works. Two weeks later, Carl Ross starts to come down. As time gets on, so people get thinner, unless they take lunch or midday dinner. So the kitchen car prepares to fill the waistcoat of Jack and the waistline of Jill. At the station, with 2012 fast approaching, work is continuing at a furious pace. Network Rail are building an entirely new platform at the end of the Eastern Range. They've started piling on the rough ground where McCaslin's canopy will sit. But the brackets in the old booking hall lie undisturbed. There's still no agreement over their fate. John decides to go over Claire's head and appeal to her boss. Then we look at the ticket hall, which is the purpose of today, and, and we have your letter, marked up and responded to. And, I, I mean, I've spoken, so maybe we should pass this open, but we've sort of responded yep. to each of the points, Paddy. The first thing you said was a simpler classical design defining the height, volume, and geometry of the space. Yep. And we said, well, we've moved the scheme on from the consented scheme, and we are indeed reinstating the volume of the space and the geometry, we think. Walls and balcony, you're looking to reinstate the brackets. And we're saying, well, we will now, correct, Mark, retain all of the brackets? Yes, we are retaining all Repair the brackets retain. within the space. They're now divided between the, that space and the adjacent per bedroom. The ticket desk, this was particularly insulting. Well, no, no, OK. <laughs> and the bar Sorry. sorry. Um, it's about the brackets, basically. I think our view is that we actually wanted them revealed and retained, not just visible through a sort of oblique angle when you're getting your tickets. And they need to be actually revealed in the space as, as a very important architectural element. So I think we want to see potential, potentially a worked-up no. scheme. I mean, if it looks better without them being visible, then we'll mm. consider we will, it. We will show you. you, know, you, will yeah. you we will show it's you. It's really to make the architecture yeah. work together. I think what we should do, Mark, Mark, is make a, mo make a model, mm -hmm. a proper physical model, of the whole balcony edge, all the support brackets, mm -hmm. the ductwork, everything, and then we'll 
you know, if we can make a big scale, one to twenty scale model, that's the best way to look at it. I mean, yeah, it's, it'd be great because the station, you know, is a bit shabby at the moment, and it's going to be wonderful when you finish. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, we hope so. It's going to be great. It is, yeah. it is an architectural masterpiece, and you're going to get it back. How kind, Paddy. <laughs> well, I'll hold you to it as well. Because <laughs> if it's not, yeah, that's it. <laughs> It needs to be as good as St Pancras. Try harder on the new that's, that's, the cha that's the challenge. It's better than St Pancras. It needs to be as, at least as good as it. Oh, why not? I think we can learn a great deal from yeah. St Pancras. Yeah. Yeah. Good and bad, but mostly good. It's symptomatic of the uncertainty around this process that everyone thinks they've won. John thinks peace has broken out. No, I mean, I think when you look at what they were concerned about, um, there was just a couple of issues. I mean, the brackets is an issue, but, you know, it's really not big stuff. It's just a bracket, for God's sake. Paddy also thinks reason has prevailed. It's the classic thing that you start off in one position and there's a little bit of confusion and a little bit of misunderstanding. And if you just sit down and talk about it, most of it goes away. Not every time, but, you know, most of it does go away. But amid the bonhomie, back at JMP, it's not clear whether anyone took any notes of what was agreed. And the model helped, of course, and Network Rail, Rail have generously offered to pay for it entirely this afternoon, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's collaborative. You need to have a basis for what you believe. You know, they understood that. It comes down to a couple of issues that you sort out in... You know, well, that's what we're doing that quickly is get people around the table as we get an issue to yeah. sort out and sort it through and resolve it. Because we haven't got time to for protracted decision making process really. At the goods yard, Argent has started earthworks on site. The first boreholes are being sunk. Archaeologists are scrambling to record the evidence of a lost industrial age that is being revealed. In front of the granary, they uncover two old turntables and spark the first serious rift between Argent and E.H. In contrast to their early casual attitude to Carl Ross, English heritage want the turntables preserved. Here. There's two almost intact. This one and one at the other end of the granary building. And the one at the other end is, is more likely to be refurbishable and possibly put back in use. You know, we haven't found any uh, kind of mummified bodies down there yet, but it's like Egyptian excavations, isn't it? This is kind of as good as we've got, I guess, isn't it? For a while, the debate over the turntables slows the progress of work on the entire site. And there's another cause of friction with English heritage. Argent are unhappy with the office buildings that flank the granary, late additions to the 1851 design. They want them hidden. Uh, well, outside, what we want to put on is a very, very fine mesh screen uh, with LEDs in. So when it's off, you see the building, uh, and when it's on, you see art. But we haven't got planning permission or listed building permission for that yet, because we, um, we did apply, but we chickened out. But uh, we're chickened going to, out. yeah, we're going, we've probably, uh, we probably weren't quite ready with the full technical details, but, uh, but we are now, and we will apply again. And, uh, we, we may get permission or not. English heritage are unenthusiastic about Rogers' LEDs, arguing they obscure the building's historic facades and at some future date could be used for advertising, not art. EH's refusal reopens old wounds at Argent's architects, Stanton Williams. They'd wanted to go one step further and demolish the office buildings. That is sort of a card model we made very early on in our studies, investigations. We took that away and said, 
well, look at this. Now you've got a building. This starts to express that. Let's put a few lights on here, and isn't that rather wonderful? Doesn't that, can you imagine coming out of King's Cross, walking up that boulevard, seeing the canal and having that? What does that symbolize? You know, the power of that building. We lost that argument and said, well, okay, what about if we were to put a screen, another veil, in front of that building? And so we proposed here a very fine veil of stainless steel mesh that would allow us then to put in these LEDs. And that's really where the arguments, the second round of discussion, not arguments, discussion, debate, I apologize. We can either move backwards to where we would like to get in 1851, but equally, at the moment, we can't bring it up to 2010. The LEDs are formally represented, and EH say no again. Then Argent give in on the turntables. They're to be preserved in situ. But there's another more pressing worry. Central St. Martins still haven't signed on the dotted line. They can't sell their existing building. The Elizabethan goes driving onwards, while buffet attendants or restaurant stewards performing their corridor service dance try to anticipate passengers' wants. But sometimes breaking this smooth onward flow, though the home signal's clear, the distance says slow. At the station, a month on, there's been no movement on booking hall or brackets, despite the apparent agreement. Now Network Rail issue another challenge to English Heritage's commitment to change. A new passenger bridge. First, they need EH approval to remove the existing listed bridge. It's far too small to handle the expected surge in passenger numbers. They want to replace it with John McCaslin's sleek design, made of iron, painted grey, punctuated by glass and steel lifts taking passengers to and from the platforms, as modern regulations demand. It may be modern, but it passes through the historic space of the train shed, and so the design goes to EH. The approach that, that we're pursuing is that it should be uh, a first-class piece of modern design and my sense is that this is pretty well there, but not quite. And could we not wring another 10% of sophistication out of this? Um, could we not get it just that little bit better? They refer the design to the London Advisory Committee, or LAC. Eminent architects and engineers they're brought in to advise EH on tricky situations. I use King's Cross a lot. And, uh, in fact, I drew it waiting for the train. And, well, I think there's, it's not just the building, it's actually the paraphernalia that goes with it, the detail. Look at this lattice metal detail. Look at this very nice bracket. Look at this clock. You know, we take it all for granted, actually, every day. Modern, there's a sort of language of modern architecture to do with glass and shadow gaps and, you know, neat junctions. And it looks beautiful in a gallery, beautiful in a modern house. I mean, if Kevin MacLeod was here, he'd be telling you it's all very beautiful, and he'd be right. But on a sort of public infrastructure, you need things like cast iron, which is painted, or metal, bolts, rivets, lattice work, things that can be maintained by clumsy people who don't look after things very well, frankly. I personally didn't have the same degree of preservationist fervour for the bridge that perhaps others had, but then it's got to be considered properly. There's a scheme at the end of the day which is very good. The only downside is you have to have these lifts which get very blocky, and I think that's the real rub for me, that it's never 
easy to cope with things. Even if they're glass, they look big and chunky in the middle of this wonderful station. Network Rail, uh, you, you just sit. I spend my life on the trains. I look out of the window and I see the way that they, they've, treat, they've repainted all the stations on my line where I live in sort of mauve and, mauve and magnolia. You know, those awful sort of lilac. I mean, what happens when McCaslam's Bridge is painted lilac? Twice, the LAC reject the proposal. In particular, they object to McCaslin's designs for the new lifts. I think the 21st of July, something like that. Eventually, a compromise. Mid-July. A deputation of LAC members go to McCaslin's to try and reach agreement. John's away. The meeting's chaired by Hero, his deputy. Station redevelopment program. There is this fantastic station, very powerful. And one of the difficulties with lifts is that they don't really, uh, except when they're working, read as lifts. They just read in your, this scheme as glass boxes, and occasionally they get used. Oh, no, quite, quite the opposite, actually, Alan. You know, a train holds a thousand people, as you know. Mm -hmm. and within that thousand people, I think we expect few people to use the lift. So I actually see the lift as a very visually active, exciting piece of the drama of the space. And I think... It's something we want to celebrate. We don't want to hide it. And I don't think that's what you're proposing. That's what no, you're you suggesting. can't hide it. It's but just it's something... making an honest object rather than special glitzy bits of mm. architecture. Mm. The, the approach here it is one of, I think, honesty and simplicity and hopefully elegance that come out of that. We but are being pretty... pretty the principal issue is the way in which the, you've used the lift to provide the stability to the bridge. And therefore, the lift columns are these enormous, great, fat elephant legs. Mm -hmm. That's the fundamental issue. If you had always, from the very beginning, separated out the stability of the bridge from the design of the lifts, I don't think we'd even be here this afternoon. Because it's the lifts that stick in our gullets the whole time. The timescales are very tight on it. We are looking to go out to tender on this in seven days' time. Um, so obviously we'll, there'll be an issue there that we have to work in. Actually, I think maybe we need to delay that. And I'm really glad you're designing this and not us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for having me. I was just wondering what happens next. Are the fellows from the LAC acting on behalf of the LAC, or is it purely a, an advisory role that they've just come in to support um, the development? How, I, I don't, don't quite, it's not, the sort of clarity of their position, I think, has started to be lost slightly. And the system that's fairly recognised and regimented is you know, sort of a meandering on its own route. I think where it goes now is for you to consider all of this, yeah. um, to come back with a, you know, use the term widely, a, a, a revised proposal, but, but, yeah. but, you know, something that comes out of the discussion today. And then at probably at some stage, I hope, all that will happen is that we'll go back to the committee and say thank you very much for your help. We've now got something that we feel very comfortable with. With deadlines looming, an agreement of sorts. EH park the argument over the new bridge without resolution. But they agree to network rail taking the old bridge down, as long as it's preserved in its entirety. That means rather than smash it down in one night, network rail have got to do it over three painstaking days. That means closing the station over Christmas, risking a rerun of the previous year's disastrous delays after track work on the West Coast Line overran. Three months on, the first phase of demolition starts one chilly Saturday evening in late November. The removal of the clock. 
Network Rail need to get the clock out before they can begin preparing for the Christmas bridge lift. But EH are insisting the clock, like the bridge, be removed intact. The station is closed down. The electricity to the overhead lines is turned off. The work starts late, and then there's another delay. The screws holding the clock won't budge. Eventually, as dawn looms, and with it the reopening of the station, the clock comes down. who keeps water flowing on the tubes of the boiler, keeps up the pressure, heaves tons of coal on, makes sure his driver's got enough steam to roll on, bends till his backache shifts as his feet work, rhythmically swinging to make boiler heat work. Over at the goods yard, there's a curious silence on sight. The pace of meetings between English heritage and Argent has slowed. It turns out that Central St. Martins still haven't signed their lease. The entire project is on the brink of collapse. With the economy in meltdown, it couldn't have come at a worse time. Uh, well, as you can tell, I'm really old and remember the late 80s and early 90s. Um, that was grim, and this is grim times a lot more. It is absolutely frightening. The granary is on hold. But at the station, ceaseless activity. And optimism at McCaslin's. John is now starting phase three of his planning campaign. A charm offensive to persuade EH and others of the lasting value of his redesign. That's the general configuration of the new elements. First up, the Victoria and Albert Museum. Describe that. He wants to convince them to hold his designs for posterity. I mean, if you find stenciled decoration in the old ticket hall, would you put it back? Paint over them. <laughs> uh, I've learned that when you have a particularly innocent look, <laughs> and you're pulling somebody's leg, and are you doing anything to the Royal Northern Hotel? The Great Northern Hotel. No, no, no that's, that's, that's also uh, part Argent. of the Argent. We wanted to demolish it, Charles. We wanted to remove it. That's not true. But that was... Because <laughs> we, we said it wouldn't be so easy. You could take it out and then we could just connect the canopy like this. We could pull it, pull it off. Well, it doesn't come off anymore. Oh, it's been stuck on. Yeah, we used to... I, used, I used to do, wouldn't it be better like this? And then we were forced Claire Brady to stuck it, it down. It? No, uh... <laughs> not in your life. <laughs> Next, English heritage. They're not budging on bridge or brackets. John's trying to soften them up by showing off what's already been achieved on site. He's aiming high. 50 odd, 55 million passengers, so it's yeah. a kind of future-proofing exercise. I mean, well, I mean uh, obviously I'm, I'm reasonably familiar. Right. But I haven't been on site since you've... You've probably never been on the site before, so... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, Hero, let's really... Let's leg it. Because we've got... I mean, this is legging it, Hero. This is briskly walking. <laughs> Very nice work, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it doesn't oh, make one so feel good about it. Um, it's nice to see this. It's just, it's just very interesting, because you, you come, you, you walk along the, the scaffold, where we just come, and you look and you think, fantastic, what an incredible, you know, conservation job. You see all this beautifully hand-cut slate, and you see the lead being turned and everything, you just think, this is the most wonderful restoration. You go inside, you see, in fact, the whole thing is complete fake, it's all steel. Well, I mean, I'm just, I mean, just provocatively. But I mean, this is what happens if you re-equip a building. This is no, the, I know, think it's, it's really the, interesting. I mean, you, you, you have to hide. This is the space where we can conceal everything that otherwise would be, you know, Downstairs. on the roof of the building. Or, or, or on the roof, yes. That's what we like to see. <laughs> 
There's nothing under there. Right. <laughs> nothing under there, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, lovely staircase. And we're just dropping a really nice glass lift in there. <laughs> no, I'm joking. See, <laughs> you can't wind this up that easily. <laughs> <laughs> we, just need a, we just need a ladder. So how... Um, or stand on your shoulders. It's not just a schmooze. Come on, John has a second yeah, cunning plan. He wants Simon to bless his plans for renovating an atrium, hidden away for years above left luggage. But to get to it, we really have to put back it up. And These guys have come over. We, uh, you see, there was a ladder here last time. Have we have a photo yeah. of it, Simon. We, 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 yeah. Hero, oh. because it'll be at the bridge. As you fail to get the ladder, this is the gate. <laughs> oh, that's in here, look. Roger, that's in the photo. We're going to be It's famous. It's famous. <laughs> That's the one, one bit of this sequence that's going to be in. Let's go, let's go. Right, I think we're over. We'll Simon, yeah. a gift from Network Rail. Yeah, it's very kind of you. I think I'll leave that to you, actually. There must be a ladder somewhere. But you know what it is. I mean, you yeah, get I a can sense. Imagine, I can imagine. Fantastic. And what I, what's so interesting to me is that I... Two days later, Hiro secures his ladder. Isn't it amazing? It's absolutely it glorious. Um, the proposal is uh, pub, uh, pub space at, at this level, and then up above uh, will be offices, and uh, essentially there'll be a new glazed roof. Down below, the proposal is to have the, uh, uh, the new, new 21st century toilets for the, for the station. Very important for, for station operations. It's one of those places you just disappear into. Brute economics may triumph here. With no formal EH blessing, the fate of the atrium is in network rail's hands. They don't want to develop it. Their budget is already under strain. Ciao. At the goods yard, economics are also having their say. The builders are back. Behind the granary, huge piles are being driven into the ground. Piles that will support the fabric of the new St. Martin's headquarters. At the last possible moment, they sign. Uh, this time last week, it was looking decidedly iffy. But uh, about 6.30 last Tuesday, we got confirmation that the money was in place, and uh, I went out to the pub. It's nice that these 240 guys are actually going to turn up again tomorrow and carry on working for the next couple of years, isn't it? Not very nice, really, was it? Wandering around here and saying, sorry, guys, we're closing the site. But, yeah, that's what would have happened. And that's been happening all over the country on uh, literally hundreds of, uh, of sites. At the end of these wires sit men in control rooms prompters assisting the course of a play, breathing out words like Arabian perfumes. Too bad there's no record of just what they say. At their weekly meeting with EH, Network Rail raised the issue of the new footbridge. There's still no sign-off from the wise men of the LAC. Really, they, they would like the structure to be more what's it called, honest and uh, for the, the lift shafts to not actually do the bracing support of the bridge function. Who took Any notes elements? of the, the meeting? I'm not totally clear. I, I mean, Martin was there. I don't know if there's any sort of official... I'd yeah. like to get some agreement between yeah. what we think we've got to do I mean, rather can, than people's perception. I mean, I can try and write something up. It would be useful, and then we'd circulate us to get everybody's yeah. agreement. You know, we need some basis to work from. OK. The deadline for removing the old passenger bridge is fast approaching. 
The first lift should be completed over platforms one and two. Network one Rail start a string of internal meetings to ensure that they can keep EH happy and get it out intact, but also crucially do it on time and avoid a fine. Platform seven and eight, um, and we've come up with a 95% confidence of delivery by the completion. Okay. There's another pressing issue for Network Rail, the booking hall. They've nearly cleared the space where the new hall will sit. But there's no verdict from EH on the redesign. Today, Claire is asking for a definitive judgment from her board director. Outline plans for what they wanted to do. We expressed quite strong reservations about the, the character of these insertions and also the cladding out of the balcony and the fact that this wouldn't express any of the cast iron brackets. It seems to me we're getting slightly sidetracked by the brackets issue when there's a whole fundamental yeah. interior design here. When I look at that, it says to me Barbican. It does, 1960s, yeah. and yeah. I just wonder if that's the right thing to have in this space. I'm just curious um, as to whether our issue is that we want to have a more historical design approach, something more traditional, or whether we have a fundamental problem with a modern design insertion here. Um, in terms of the actual brackets and the expression, I understand I, there's a need I, for yeah, support. It's but a question of focus. I, yeah. you know, if we're going to go back to them, they need to be very clear what our concerns are, and our concerns ought yeah. to be about the spatial quality of the whole. It's just so far off track at the moment still. Um, you know, I just feel I'm getting... In, they're, they're trying to distract me from the real yeah. issue by the brackets. This should be taking its cue from the listed station. Yes. It's part of the listed yeah. building. We, we clearly still have reservations about this, so we need to go back to McCaslin and say we feel it's still not satisfactory. Yeah. At King's Cross, the Eastern Range is now ready, bar a few finishing touches. Preparations for the bridge removal are nearly complete. And Claire is bringing the bad news on the booking hall to Network Rail. Actually, the two things that you had come to us with, which was basically the balcony design yeah. and the wall and ceiling both got definitely okay. thumbs down. Thumbs down. Although, although we addressed all the concerns from your letter, it, the issue we, then is an issue about design, not about the design. Concern. It's design. It's the whole approach to the space, the architectural philosophy. So um, where does it take us? Because back in June, we looked at the first principles, we went through all the <laughs> concerns, and we believe that notwithstanding <laughs> the materials, which you want to see yeah. a sample, and the bracket issue, the detailing of the brackets, those were the primary issues that you needed to address. Well, well, first of all, I think we need to sort out the first principles, the design of the things in the space, and then go to the brackets. I think it, what uh, I'm a little bit concerned about is the uh, comments about the overall design, especially because we've been talking about them for a year now. Um, so um, and from a client point of view, it must be a little bit um, uh, worrying. That, um, uh, we'll have to take it back to the, the design take flows from your choice of material, I think. And, you know, we always said we had a really big issue with yeah. the material and the insertions of the modern elements within the space and that's never been a mystery we've always no. expressed that but we need to get some Inverage. fundamental principles agreed don't we we do so we can design we'll, in confidence we'll yeah. 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 all right okay very good driving piles where the new canopy will go. And Hero is reporting to his box. Uh, the news is that, that we need to go back with um, uh, another effort to articulate certain details. But what I thought we had resolved all of that, the no, booking hall interior, not, I thought that was finished. It's not as resolved as we had thought. Oh. The issue is the treatment of the, uh, the, the wall ceiling. So just, just draw what, what the issue is. Questions about how we show the bracket. Uh, 
still. But we, we discussed all we, this we stuff. Did, why why has it not been shut down? God, God, it might be months. It, there's been a clarification um, reiterated this morning that they don't wish the brackets to be oh, removed. That's idiotic. It's stupid. They don't want the brackets removed. Well, uh, all reloc the, all the relocated, you mean? Relocated. But they weren't all going to get relocated, were they? They don't want any of them relocated. That's so stupid. It's frustrating that after all this time, we thought we'd something agreed. Apparently, it hasn't been agreed. We're back where we were before. Why the inconsistency? It does seem an awful waste of time. It's incredibly frustrating. Oh, well. OK, anything else? Uh, no, I think that's... Okay, doke. Christmas is here, and with it, some good news for the hard-pressed King's Cross project team. This time, the bridge removal is a triumph. We'd uh, plan to be at this point at about 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, so uh, you can calculate that for yourself, uh, about 10 hours ahead of schedule at this stage. There's a bit of it left for you to film, you know. It could have been a bit embarrassing, couldn't it? <laughs> That's what happens when you get the A team on shift, you see. <laughs> Anything could have happened if we weren't here. <laughs> a final irony after all that hard work. Despite the importance English heritage attached to it, and the massive cost of preserving it intact, nobody actually wants the bridge. For now, its resting place will be a Cambridgeshire car park. Snow blankets London. Traffic's at a standstill. King's Cross is shutting down. And there's still no news on bridge or booking hall. The, the simple overview is, we've had a rejection for the second time from English Heritage Internal Panel, the casework review. The uh, rejection in specifically in what areas? I think, I think I can say all areas. I, I thought they, they, we cracked it by opening up the gap, the joint, and being able to make the brackets visible. That's right. Uh, however, so why the change? What's, what's because the casework thing? review panel wanted to relook at the overall approach, and they felt that the session should not be just focusing on the detail issues. Okay, come in just before we get to that, the train shed bridge, is that still an issue? It's, uh, it, it is an issue. Right. However, we will... I, what we I'd like to make a suggestion here, sorry to interrupt, but is, is that we... Is I will give Paddy a ring right now, and I will say to him, look, Paddy, everything is going incredibly well on King's Cross, um, but we seem to have two outstanding issues, the booking hall and the bridge. Let's sit down once more to get resolution. Yeah. Do you know, Mum, do you know that those uh, marks in the east elevation there? Sapnel. That's an ME110. As the snow melts, Roger is once again extolling the virtues of his scheme. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, I think we're going to leave it. Why not? It's fantastic. We'll I believe it unless we get a German banker. <laughs> this time to a receptive EH chief executive. Have you seen the turntable? Oh, you know, I really want to see that. How amazing. Are you going to try and get them going again? Yes. Oh, that'd be nice. So in 2011, two. you come through here, and then you've got a five-story five high public foyer. 
It's actually incredibly impressive, isn't it? I'm a little bit taken aback, actually. How good. Good. It's good. <laughs> St. Martin's may have signed, but the funding for all Rogers' other buildings on site is still not secure. Question. You know, we are asked constantly at the moment is the financial problems are going to make you cut corners? And the answer is no. The financial problems are going to make us become more innovative. And if we get to the point you know, where we can't do things properly, we won't do them. And that looks like a Roman aqueduct. Yeah. Yeah. And the sort of scale of it as well is so enormous. I think it's good. Just, they must have been thinking about the Romans there. when they designed it. They just must have been. Yeah. We get over the next three months. And what's the three months? What's the next three months? Why is that a key period for you? We're just waiting to see whether 75 billion of printing money actually releases money into the system. When yeah, we finish this development, the rest of London will just be an extension to King's Croft. <laughs> you've got fantastic hotels here, you've got fantastic apartments, you've got schools, you've got old people's homes, you've got medical facilities, you've got theatres, bars, restaurants. Church? Watch this space, watch this space. In three months' time, the world has either got to have loosened up or we're in very, very, very big poo. As they come down from Grant's house, the peak of the climb, they're over the worst. And she's running on time. station, it's high noon. John has got his meeting with Paddy. Yeah, this, I think there's two things we're, we're looking at okay. today, which is, the firstly, is the progress on the booking hall. Yep, yep. Um, and the second is the progress on the, on the main train shed bridge. Right. After all the months of argument, it's no contest. Also Clock ticking, John bows to the inevitable. We've had uh, initial discussions with the engineers, and we think we can reduce the three... Well, we know we can reduce the 300 by a third. The bridge lifts are to be slimmed down. So we've reworked the walkway which conceals the retained brackets. And the booking hall to be redesigned, showing the brackets. I think this is a great improvement, and thank you very much for that. And I say that just because historic fabric shines through. Good. Steve. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Good. Pieces are broken There was yeah. never anything but peace. <laughs> Mischief is. <laughs> <laughs> Some, at some point, you have to think, well, maybe I'm the only one out of step. Maybe the other people could be right, actually. <laughs> Very odd, that you, picture. You, you might never, not have come through that moment in your life and realising that maybe somebody else could be right. <laughs> so it's all planetary from now on? We hope so, indeed. Yep. Onward. Onward. The second part of our brand new series profiling Britain's greatest writers in their own words is here on BBC4 tomorrow at 9. And back to tonight now, we're delving into the weird and wonderful world of early cinema with Paul Merton. Next.